AZ 900 is one fundamental exam that opens the doorway for you to enter the exciting world of Microsoft Azure Cloud. Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. 20 latest questions on AZ 900 are coming up in this part 9 of AZ 900 series in 2023. These questions give you a real exam hands-on and each question is backed by cloud concepts. I will also share loads of Microsoft documentation to validate the answers and that will also help you to do some self-study. And besides that, I will also give you some exam tips and a free PDF file containing all the questions and the answers. And please do not miss to watch the previous parts of this series, 145 latest and important questions fully synced with Microsoft syllabus already covered, a must watch for all, all the links shared in the description box. So let's gear up and prepare for AZ 900 exam. So let's begin part 9 with the question number 146 and here let me show you a question which has so many versions on internet and here I would present some of them. The most confusing part is that although the question is exactly the same but the Microsoft services that are given for you to choose the answer from are totally different and this confuses lot of people. And even after looking so many different sites, you won't be able to make out the correct answer. I was asked this question so many times. So I did some research and will present you three versions of this question and will also give you some Microsoft documentation to better understand the question, its answers and also do some self-study. So let's read the question. The question says that what should you use to evaluate whether your company's Azure environment meets the regulatory requirements. Your options are the Knowledge Center website. The option B is the Advisor Blade from Azure Portal. Option C is Compliance Manager from the Security Trust Portal. And option D is Security Center Blade from the Azure Portal. And the correct answer to this question is option C, Compliance Manager from the Security Trust Portal. Now let's check out the other versions of this question. So here comes question number 147, exactly the same question. However, this time the options are Azure Service Health, Azure Knowledge Center, Microsoft Defender for Cloud and the last option is Azure Advisor. And the correct answer for this question is option C, Microsoft Defender for Cloud. And friends, this is a tutorial documentation from Microsoft on how to improve your regulatory compliance. And here you can read that Microsoft Defender for Cloud helps you streamline the process of meeting regulatory compliance requirements using regulatory compliance dashboard. Defender for Cloud continuously accesses your hybrid cloud environment to analyze the risk factors according to the controls and best practices to the standards that you have applied to your subscription. The dashboard reflects the status of your compliance with these standards. Also, my friends, in the same documentation, you can also read about the prerequisite and how can you access your regulatory compliance. Not only that, you're also given with some of the investigation that you can do on your regulatory compliance issues. So all in all, a very good documentation if you want to learn how to improve your regulatory compliance. Now let's move on to the question number 148. Question is exactly the same once again. However, this time the options are Azure Service Health, Azure Knowledge Center, Azure Security Center and Azure Advisor. And this time my friends, amongst these options, I have picked option C, Azure Security Center as the answer to this question. So now that you have seen three versions of the same question, in case you do not get Compliance Manager as one of the options or the services to choose the answer from, then in that case, you always go for Azure Security Center. And why do I say that? Let me show you documentation in support of the answer. So after doing a lot of research, I came across to this Microsoft documentation that brings out the difference between Microsoft Defender for Cloud and Microsoft Defender Endpoint. And here you can see there is an answer given by a Microsoft employee. You can see it here. And here it's clearly mentioned that Microsoft Defender is the overall brand for the Microsoft security products. And while these two have similar names, you have spotted they are different products. So here you can see that we are given in a summary what is Microsoft Defender? So Microsoft Defender for Endpoint is an enterprise endpoint security platform and Defender for Endpoints incorporates things like next generation antivirus but also includes behavioral sensors, leverages cloud-based security analytics and threat intelligence in order to provide security for Windows, Mac OS, Linux, Android and iOS endpoints. 
On the other hand, Microsoft Defender for Cloud provides cloud security posture management, providing a security analysis for all your resources in your cloud estate and cloud workload protection, which gives you specific protection for your resources such as virtual machines, cloud storage, databases, security keys, containers, etc. So now as you saw in the Microsoft documentation, Microsoft Defender is an overall brand for Microsoft security products. Thus you need to choose Azure Security Center. And here I would say that absence of compliance manager makes Azure Security Center the next possible best answer. Friends, it took me a lot of time and effort to bring all the possible variations of this question and provide you with right Microsoft documentation. So please like the video. And friends, in order to get the free PDF file with all the 20 questions and answers that we are discussing in this part 9, you have to tell me the correct answers for the question number 147, 153 and 164. Please subscribe to the channel and become eligible for this free PDF file. Send in your answers to the email ID connect us at the rate the techblackboard.com. Also friends, to help you even further, we have an entire playlist on Azure Fundamentals explaining each Azure concept in detail. This playlist is fully synced with the latest labels from Microsoft on AZ900. So please do check out this playlist. The link is shared in the description box and also now appearing in the i button on the top right corner. Now let's move on to the question number 149. It says you plan to provision platform as a service resources in Azure which resources are an example of pass your options are an azure web app an azure virtual machines an azure logic app or an azure sql database and the correct answer for this question is option a option c and option d now let's focus on some of the questions from azure key vault you can expect handful of questions in az900 exam around this important concept so here comes question number 150. It says Azure Key Vault can analyze security log files from Azure Virtual Machines. True or false? And this one, my friends, is a false statement. And this is because Azure Key Vault is a cloud service that provides a secure store for secrets. It has nothing to do with analyzing security logs from Azure Virtual Machines. And now comes question number 151. It says this question requires you to evaluate the underlying text to determine if it's correct. Here you can see that we are given with this statement which says Azure Key Vault is used to store app secrets. So basically you have to make sure this statement is correct. And if it's already correct, then you have to choose no change needed. Otherwise, you have to make this statement correct by choosing one of these three options available. And what are the other three options we are given with Azure Security Center, Azure Blob Storage and Azure Repos. But for now, the correct answer is option A, no change needed. And this is because Azure Key Vault, as we understood in the previous question as well, it is actually used to store app secrets, making this statement entirely correct. Moving on with the question number 152, again, you are given with the statement with underlying text. It says that Azure Key Vault is used to store secrets for Azure Active Directory, Azure AD user accounts. And the options given are no change needed, Azure Active Directory administrative accounts, personally identifiable information or server applications. And the correct answer for this question is option D, server applications. So the correct statement becomes Azure Key Vault is used to store secrets for server applications. And here comes question number 153. It says your company plans to automate the deployment of the servers to Azure. Your manager is concerned that you may expose administrative credentials during the deployment and you need to recommend an Azure solution that encrypts the administrative credentials during the deployment. What should you include in the recommendation? Your options are Azure Key Vault, Azure Information Protection, Azure Security Center or Azure Multi-Factor Authentication. And the correct answer but of course is Azure Key Vault. And in this documentation from Microsoft on Azure Key Vault, you can read very well in the first paragraph itself that Azure Key Vault can be used to securely store and tightly control access to tokens, passwords, certificates, API keys and other secrets. Moving on with the question number 154, it says Azure Key Vault automatically generates a new secret after every use, true or false. And this one, my friends, is a true statement. And now comes question number 155. It says which Azure service should you use to store certificates? Your options are Azure Security Center, an Azure Storage Account, Azure Key Vault or Azure Information Protection. 
and the correct answer is option C Azure Keyboard. As we just saw the documentation, in case you missed, please rewind the video. Now let's shift our focus to other type of questions. And here comes question number 156. It says that if you are not using virtual machines and all its resources, what should you do to save costs? Your options are stop virtual machines, shut down virtual machine or switch off virtual machine. And the correct answer is option B, shut down virtual machine. And friends, this is a very important Azure concept. A lot of people end up paying huge bills because of the confusion between the concept of stopping virtual machine and shut down virtual machine. So please listen to this very carefully. When you do not need a virtual machine or the resources associated with that virtual machine, you must always shut it down. And this is because when you just stop a virtual machine or you can also say that you keep a virtual machine in a deallocated state. In this case, of course, you will not be charged for the virtual machine compute resources but you will still need to pay for the operating system and the data storage disk attached to that virtual machine. So that's why when you are done with the virtual machine, always make sure to shut it down. And now comes question number 157. It says that you have an Azure environment that contains multiple Azure virtual machines. You plan to implement a solution that enables the client computers on your on-premises network to communicate to the Azure virtual machines. You need to recommend which Azure resources must be created for this planned solution. So which two Azure resources should you include in the recommendation? Your options are a virtual network gateway, a load balancer, an application gateway, a virtual network or the last one is a gateway subnet. Now friends, this is a tricky question or maybe let's say this is not tricky but it actually checks your actual Azure working knowledge. And in this question, you can see that it says on-premises network to communicate to the Azure virtual machines. And that's why here I assume that if there is a virtual machine in Azure, a virtual network is already existing. So this is why I'm ruling out the option D, a virtual network. See, in this question, we have to only choose two Azure services and that's why we have to make some clever assumptions here. And once again, as the question says that on-premises network to communicate with the Azure virtual machines. So this means option B, which is a load balancer and option C, which is application gateway, which is a web traffic load balancer is anyways of no relevance here. Thus, the only two choices we are left with is option A, a virtual network gateway and option E, a gateway gateway subnet and those are most definitely the answer of this question and you know what friends this is one trick that I always use in my exam I call this elimination technique and in this technique you try to separate out the options that do not fit and make some smart assumptions and this will lead you to the correct answer and with that let's move to the question number 158 it says Azure Web App, Azure Logic App and Azure SQL Database are an example of platform as a service or PaaS model true or false and we just saw a variation of the same question in this very video few questions back the answer to this question is that this is a true statement now let's move on to the question number 159 it says dns server runs on virtual machine is a platform as a service true or false and this one my friends is a false statement and you have to understand that in general platform as a service is about a platform where a developer can design and deploy an application. So a regular DNS server that runs on virtual machine is not PaaS and Azure virtual machine is always considered IAS or infrastructure as a service as it offers computing resources. Let's move on to the question number 160. It says SQL server installed on a virtual machine is SaaS or software as a service true or false and this one again is a false statement and the reason is that if you install SQL server on a virtual machine manually or by using the box image it is still a virtual machine and this means that as a customer you still need to manage all the platform aspects and by now we have read so many times that virtual machine is infrastructure as a service now let's move on to the question number 161 it says Azure SQL database is an example of past true or false and this one is a true statement and this is because customers who purchase Azure SQL database do not need to maintain anything related to the SQL platform because Microsoft manages that for them and here comes question number 162 it says Azure files is an example of SaaS or software as a service true or false and this one my friends is a false statement 
And why so? Because Azure Files is a pass offering offered by Microsoft Azure that is built on top of Azure Storage. It provides you fully managed file shares over a protocol that is known as SMB or Server Message Block. Moving on with the question number 163, it says cloud computing leverages virtualization to provide services to multiple customers simultaneously. True or false? And of course, this is a true statement. Let's move on to the question number 164. It says which service provides serverless computing in Azure? Your options are Azure Virtual Machines, Azure Functions, Azure Storage Account or Azure Dedicated Host. And the correct answer is option B, Azure Functions. And now let's move on to the question number 165 that says releasing a feature to all the customers is called your options are general availability, general preview and the last option is public preview. And the correct answer is option A, general availability. So that was all for today. Friends, we would like to hear your questions and confusions on Azure Cloud. We will cover these questions in our upcoming videos so that everyone can benefit. The YouTube comment section is a great way to reach us. Other means to reach us are also flashing on your screen. And always remember my friends that your each like, subscribe and share help us to grow and keep the content absolutely free for you. So please consider liking the video, subscribe to the channel and please do not miss to press that bell icon. Also select that all option option so that you get all timely notifications of all our upcoming videos. And of course, do share our videos with all your loved ones who are also preparing for Azure exams. And I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching. If this video has added any value in your learning, a like and subscribe is highly appreciated. Share this video in your family and friends to spread and expand their learning. Your comments and feedback give me a chance to interact with you and I look forward for them. We will meet again in our next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.